Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Tuesday, February 13th. A horrible fatal crash of a Tesla employee using full self-driving beta has been reported in detail. The Washington Post released a new report on the crash today, which happened back in 2022. Hans van Ohain, a recruiter at Tesla, and his friend Eric Rossiter set out using full self-driving beta, playing a little bit of golf, and then having some drinks. The Washington Post described the crash, quote, Hours later, on the way home, the Tesla Model 3 barreled into a tree and exploded in flames, killing Von O'Hain, a Tesla employee and devoted fan of CEO Elon Musk. Rossiter, who survived the crash, told emergency responders that Von O'Hain was using an, an auto-drive feature on the Tesla that just ran straight off the road, according to a 911 dispatch obtained by the Washington Post. In a recent interview, Rossiter said that he believes that Von O'Hain was using full self-driving, which, if true, would make his death the first known fatality involving Tesla's most advanced driver's assist technology. Now, there are some additional details that are included in the Washington Post report. Uh, for example, an autopsy of Von O'Hain found that he died with a blood alcohol level of 0.26, which is more than three times the legal limit. Colorado State Police determined that intoxication was the main factor behind the accident, but they also conducted an investigation into the possibility of a role with Tesla's full self-driving beta. Tesla has started to deliver a new version of its yoke steering wheel, and it now features a normal horn. When Tesla unveiled the new Model S with the yoke butterfly steering wheel, it caused a little bit of mixed feelings in the community. Some were worried about the actual shape of the wheel being problematic, while others were concerned about the lack of driver stock and a typically functioning horn. Elon Musk believed that the wheel shape would bridge the gap to a self-driving car, but since that's not a reality quite yet, some adjustments are in order. Now, Tesla is releasing a new version of the new physical horn on the center of the wheel, and it has been one of the most requested changes. As typically, the use of a horn comes from a state of emergency or panic, unless you drive in the Washington, D.C. area. I had the pleasure of living there for a while, and people treated the horn like it was a stick shift. The Dawn Project, a group that runs advertisements attacking Tesla's full self-driving system, has received a letter from the National Highway Traffic Safety Board demanding that they cease using their logo in advertising. In the advertisement, the Dawn Project claims that Tesla shirks liability for autopilot claims, with a note from the owner's manual saying that it should only be activated on highways. In doing so, it used footage from various Tesla crashes with the logo of the NTSB overlaid on the corner of the ad. Well, now in the NTSB's letter, it says that the use of this seal violates federal law. The Dawn Project seems to have quickly complied with the letter because if you go to the YouTube video, it now has a large conspicuous blur over half the runtime on that part of the corner. Although despite the quick follow-up by the Dawn Project, it still did air during the Super Bowl, which of course already happened. Chrysler is showcasing a new concept electric car that will redefine the brand and kind of sounds like it'll redefine humanity if they had it their way. Aside from the staples of concept cars like suicide doors and a glass cabin and all that spacey stuff, Chrysler says that the car will use wireless power transfer to charge the car from the road itself. They say that this dream car should have, quote, specially equipped dedicated road lanes allowing for unlimited range. And since we're talking about the future of any kind of making, Chrysler says that they will have self-driving capability and... Why not an 800-volt lithium sulfur EV battery that'll lower their carbon footprint by around 60%? Oh gosh, this is why I don't like to report on concept cars from Legacy Auto. They just draw up some weird spaceship car and they make it do stuff like they're just writing a comic book. In today's community comment found on YouTube, I'll take a little more than a minute to share my thoughts on Dan O'Dowd's campaign against Tesla's autopilot and self-driving efforts. To back up a little bit, I really don't know what it's like to be a billionaire, or even a millionaire, but I really don't understand how someone like Dan can go through so many steps to get to the point where we are today. How many people are working for him, or how many colleagues of his are encouraging him in this pursuit when it's so obviously deceptive? Now, in brief, the campaign is producing unscientific tests where it puts full self-driving beta in difficult situations and they show the worst performances to make these advertisements. It's been shown that O'Dowd and his campaign has misled their tests, going so far as to make reports 
against full self-driving where full self-driving wasn't even active on the car. But who's there with him? That's that's something I've been thinking of. Like they have a driver and a camera operator with I'm not sure what they call it, like a stunt coordinator or something. They all had to set up this car and make it fail against these obstacles and catch it on camera. And then a script writer presumably read the Tesla owner's manual, and they still all act like the software is finished and it should behave better than a human being. On top of that, I'm going to guess that a video editor was compelled to put on that government logo. I feel bad for the video team who made it because their resumes now they can put on there. I worked on a Super Bowl advertisement that wound up being illegal. All these people are going to go through this charade, but does it ever occur to Dan O'Dowd like, wait a minute, maybe if I have to manipulate the meaning of Tesla's program and have to manipulate the car itself, maybe it's not the big deal I'm making it out to be. Maybe if I spend my money and time on something that actually is a serious problem, then I could get legitimate praise instead of this fleeting one-sided political adulation. Okay, so here's my thing. Myself, Mikey G., I think that names of these products, Autopilot and Full Self-Driving Beta, even though it says beta on there, I still think it's misleading. Now, if Dan ran a campaign just against the names of these products, it would be a lot harder to dismiss him, and there could be some real discussion being made on the implication of what self-driving means and how we can make the jump from, you know, the internal testing that it's in now into real-world application. But no, Dan is squandering his money and the reputation of those people who work for him on a campaign that can be quickly cast aside as just a hit piece. I mean, I just, I don't get it. I mean, you'd think that someone who made that kind of money would have the social and financial intelligence to make an ad campaign about something, you know, a little more pressing instead of these stage events where they actually have to twist the results. But then again, I really don't know what Dan O'Dowd is up to. He did at one time run for political office, but that seems to be a paper-thin effort, maybe just to score a lower level of scrutiny against slander? I mean, strange overt attacks like these make me wonder about conspiracies. I wonder if O'Dowd is like the fall guy for General Motors or something like that, but uh, you can let me know in the comment section what I'm missing or why I'm wrong, because normally when someone starts to get into conspiracy theories, it's because they feel a need to repair a hole in their ego that their limited understanding has exposed. That's probably me right now. So thanks for watching Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.